Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you a blacksmith's approach to forging a center punch. And the reason I'm calling it a blacksmith center punch is because it is totally done in the forge and every detail is hammered out. There is no grinding or filing done to shape the point on this center punch. Years ago when I was visiting one of the first blacksmiths that I met uh, he showed me a center punch that looked very much like the one I'm holding in my hand right now. And he told me that this center punch was totally forged. There was no grinding and no filing. He didn't actually show me how to do it, but he did tell me that this is something that could be totally forged. I found it interesting at the time, but of course I had absolutely no idea how to approach that problem. So that's what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to be making my center punch out of a short length of crowbar. It has an octagonal cross section so it's it's nice to hang on to and it doesn't roll around when you set it down somewhere. I'm going to be drawing the uh, point of the center punch down to a finer tip than he had on his but the uh, technique is exactly the same regardless of how you want to shape your center punch. This is a great project. It doesn't use up a lot of materials, it doesn't take much time, and it's a great way to practice some basic hammering. It's also a useful tool, and you can never have too many center punches. As you already know, you could have 50 of these lying around and still not to be able to find one. The first step of the process, of course, is to use a fairly heavy hammer to get the basic shape that you're after. Even though this is a simple tool and it will work well re pretty much regardless of how you make it, it's really important to try to do your best work every time you take a hammer in your hand, especially when you're starting out and you're learning the process. You know, Don't look at it, at it as a job that you need to get through. Look at it as an opportunity to practice something that you're going to need later on when you really want to do good work. The difference between a complicated forging and a simple forging is the amount of things that you need to keep track of. You know, just attention to detail, making sure the measurements are right, making sure that everything's lining up, everything's straight, that kind of thing. So the basic techniques have to be a really, really solid thing in your mind. That way it can just run on autopilot somewhere in the background and you can just concentrate on what's essential. And for that to happen, you need to do a lot of hammering and you need to have this part of the process just become second nature and something that you don't need to think about anymore. So projects like this, even though they may seem simple and rudimentary, really give you an opportunity to practice all of those basic techniques and get that muscle memory going so that when you need it, you can set it aside and concentrate on what's important.
next step is to start shaping the tip and for that I need to switch to a much lighter hammer. This one I believe only weighs a pound. It uh, provides enough of an impact to shape the point but it doesn't distort the point or move too much material too quickly. Here I'm being very careful to strike back onto the tip and that's going to create a square end and it's going to move all the irregularities that were in the tip out to the outside edge where I can hammer them back into the bar. It's important not to be in too much of a hurry at this point. You want to forge the metal back into the bar, not just roll it around the tip, which would create a cold shut that would cause problems later on. Here I'm a little bit further along in the process and for the last couple of heats I'm really just going to be planishing the surface. I'm really not moving a lot of material. I'm taking really light hammer blows and I'm working at a pretty low heat so that the effects of each hammer blow is uh, very very slight and I'm just basically polishing the edge as much as I can.
I want to make it clear that the light that I'm using to film this is quite bright, so even though it looks like I'm hammering cold steel, I really am not. The, uh, the heat that I'm working with here now is basically a blood red to a red heat, so it's okay to hammer on it as long as you're not deforming the metal or making any major changes. You won't be creating any stress in the metal that will show up later when you heat treat. And here's a closer look at the finished point. As I move the light around, you can see a couple of uh, imperfections around the edge, but basically the faces of the uh, center punch are very smooth and they come to a very, very sharp point. And this is all done with a hammer. There was no file work or no grinding done to this at all. I heat treated the center punch by quenching it in oil and drawing the temper to a light purple. Hi, I'm Dennis and thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can contact me by using the email address that I have shown here. If you like the channel and the work that I'm doing, please consider becoming a patron. Every dollar you contribute will bring me one step closer to being able to produce videos full time.